Hey everyone, Dan here, and it's time we continue our rewatch reviews of the MCU. We're moving on to the forgotten gem of the Marvel Universe, and that is The Incredible Hulk. Now this was the second movie in from the studio, but it's technically the fifth in chronological order. Uh, having, you know, Captain America, the Winter Soldier, Captain Marvel, Iron Man 1 and 2, then The Incredible Hulk. Now, the reason I call it a forgotten gem is because I think in a lot of ways, people didn't realize, or some people didn't realize, that this was actually part of the MCU until General Thunderbolt Ross showed up in Civil War. I mean, we have a different Hulk now. We have Mark Ruffalo. Back then, Ed Norton, you know, people, I, I think because of the, the change in the lead actors, people just don't realize it's part of the MCU. Now, it's an interesting film in a lot of ways, and it's very different than the Hulk we have now. The Mark Ruffalo Hulk has been kind of calmed down, and there was an edginess to him in the beginning, but now he's Professor Hulk. And it's more of what the Hulk feels like now, where the Ed Norton version, Edward Norton, if he prefers Edward, uh, felt more like the original Stanley Jack Kirby run and also like the Bill Bixby Lou Ferrigno TV series. I mean, if you look at this film, the first 30 minutes of it feels like an episode of the old TV series. You know, he's traveling around, he's um, taking odd jobs, he's trying to keep from changing, he ends up helping people. That was the TV series. That was the basis of of the thing. And if you, and if you don't realize how popular the TV series was, Besides being a hit here in the U.S., it's still the number one imported American show in China. The Hulk was huge in China. So, now, we get those homages, and we get more of the Jekyll and Hyde feel, which is what Stanley and Jack Kirby were going for when they first created the Hulk. You know, he's he's got that monster inside of him he's trying to keep from coming out. And that's, you know... Where Ruffalo, I mean, when we get him in the Avengers, it's you get that in the first up to the point where we meet Loki and he Loki causes him to come out. But after that, he seems to be more in control of what's going on. He becomes more of an Avenger and more of a hero. And that's not what we were getting in the original film. But that's also um, maybe why, you know, maybe they think the film was a failure and it didn't do as well. But I don't think it didn't do as well because it wasn't a good film. I think it didn't do as well as like Iron Man because we'd just seen a Hulk movie. We just had the Ang Lee directed Eric Bana starring one. And then suddenly we get another one. You know, and we go from Jennifer Connelly as Betty Ross to Liv Tyler. We get uh, um, William Hurt as Thunderbolt Ross. We get Tim Blake Nelson as Samuel Stearns, which is great if they did a second film because suddenly the guy who's playing Looking Glass in The Watchmen now is playing the leader which I, I hope they come back to. I hope they still bring that character back. You know, you've got Tim Roth as uh, Emil Blonsky or The Abomination. I mean, it's a, it's a rather enjoyable movie when you sit down and watch it again and I think it does play better when you rewatch it. I think People were so, you know, still had the Ang Lee one, and I don't want to knock the Ang Lee one, but it didn't feel like a Hulk movie. It was very strange, and I think he thought making a comic book movie meant doing those odd little panel things that he did every once in a while, and he didn't get it, where I look at what... Uh, I. I I don't remember the uh, the director's name at the moment, but um, I think he did a much better job of it. And it, it's surprising when you sit down and watch it again. There's a lot of tension in the early scenes. Uh, there's a lot of good action, especially when the army takes on takes him on at the campus. And there are so many Easter eggs. If you're a fan of the old TV series or of the comics, there's just one Easter egg after another. They even play the theme song from the TV series. They uh, have the purple stretchy pants. I think, and I think they get that joke in twice, 
the stretchy pants, and then the purple pants. Um, there's just so many really good Easter eggs in there that if you're a Hulk fan, and and the, the, the scene in the rain after he rescues Betty, and they're hiding in what looks to be almost like a zoo or a park, and they're hiding under the rocks in the rain, the Beauty and the Beast moment type thing there, that was really nice. And I think that this is a movie that really deserves a rewatch because I, th I think people will more appreciate it on the rewatch. And don't let the fact that we've got Mark Ruffalo now sour you to this. Uh, Norton did a really good job. I think he played, he was fine as Bruce Banner. I thought his Hulk was good. I think the CGI now, of course, is better. But technology keeps advancing. But there was nothing really wrong with it then. I thought the fight between him and Abomination was pretty good. There was a lot of good humor beats. And overall, it's a surprisingly good movie. Um, it's not going to be in the top five of the Marvel Universe. I, at 23 films now, I don't know if it's going to be in the top 10. But it's not going to be in the bottom. It's not going to be Thor the Dark World. And I, I don't mean to pick on Thor the Dark World. But that is kind of universally considered the worst of the MCU movies. And I think a lot of people put the Hulk near it. But when you sit down and rewatch it, you see a lot of what they were trying to do. And even though they've taken a very different turn now with Mark Ruffalo... I, I see a lot of potential there. I really would love to see them bring back um, Samuel Stearns. I'd love to see what uh, uh, Tim Blake Nelson could do as the leader. I'd like to see, you know, if they're going to do the Thunderbolts that people keep talking about. Now, when I say people, I don't mean Marvel. I mean, you know, p uh, pundits like me, people who talk about films and stuff. If you know, they, if they're going to do the Thunderbolts as those people keep talking about, then having the Abomination on the team would be awesome, and bringing Tim Roth back would be awesome. Having um, William Hurt playing the Red Hulk would be great. These are all wonderful things that that could be done. But there was a lot of neat things we had. We had Doc Samson set up. Um, uh, I can't think of the gentleman's name who was playing him. Uh, I don't see if I have it in my notes either, but um, he's from uh, Modern Family. And uh, Ty Burrell. Ty Burrell playing Doc Samson. How cool would that be to have that character back? Those are some neat characters. And I really love to see them do more with them and play in the Hulk universe. We jumped from this, which had a lot of potential. We saw little bits of the Hulk and different things that they were doing in the other movies. And then we jumped to Planet Hulk. And there's so many other Hulk stories, so much other material to pull from that is getting lost by speeding through to Professor Hulk. So I really would love to see them go back and do some more stuff. Maybe see what took place between what happened at the college and what happened you know, him being picked up uh, by Natasha. You know, I'd love to see some of that era. What what was he up to when he was traveling? Let's, you know, I'd love to go back to the more Savage Hulk and get more of that because to me that's more of the character. What we have now is an MCU-friendly Hulk that plays well with others. And that's fun and that's great. But it's not really the Hulk I want to see. I want to see this Hulk. I want to see... The Beauty and the Beast. I want to see the Jekyll and Hyde. So that's my thoughts on this movie. I think it paid off better what the Hulk was originally supposed to be. It's a little bit, you know, I think they even could have turned up the horror aspects of it a little more. It would have been fun to see. And I'm watching the movie again. I'm saddened that we didn't get to play in this universe more, in this, this setup, and that... They kept the character. I love the fact that we kept the character, and I love what Mark Ruffalo is doing. But I miss what they were doing here, and I think there was so much potential they could have kept going. I wish Universal and Marvel could make it the deal that just they could do Hulk movies, and we could get more stories of the Savage Hulk. That said, it is what it is. It's I, I still think it's the uh, forgotten gem. And if you're rewatching the Marvel Universe, do not skip over this film. It has its place. It and 
It's not perfect, but it's a fun film, and I enjoyed it. So that's all I got to say about The Hulk. Um, we're going to move on to Thor next, and then we're going to get to The Avengers, and that will finish up uh, the uh, uh, first wave, or um, I don't remember what they call it right now. It's been a long day, but thanks for uh, tuning in, and uh, please hit the like and subscribe buttons, and uh, whatever I did last is going to be right up there and uh, help spread the word about this channel. And uh, when I finish The Avengers, I'll probably do on some other rewatch reviews. Uh, I'm thinking of doing the James Bond films before the new movie comes out, which is now postponed till November. So that's coming up in the schedule. If there's any other films you'd like me to do a rewatch review of, let me know and I'll take a look at it. Other than that, I hope you all have a good weekend. I hope you're taking care of yourselves. This is a trying time right now. I know we all got to stay in, so stay online. If there's anything I can do for you guys, uh, story-wise, anything you guys want to see while we're doing, you know, while we're all doing the social distancing, let me know. I'll see what I can do. All right? You guys take care. Big hugs and love to everybody. Have a good weekend.